Hello, welcome to the Card Access 3000 version 2.9.x Quick Start Programming Guide. The six simple steps to program in a basic Card Access 3000 system. Refer to the Card Access 3000 Quick Start Programming Guide, which can be found on the Card Access 3000 DVD or in the Continental Technical Document Library. To program the Card Access 3000 software, you need to perform the following six simple programming steps and you will have a functional Card Access 3000 system. First, you need to add a COM port, create a panel, create a schedule, create a reader, create an access group, and finally, just add a badge into personnel and your system is up and running. When the Card Access 3000 software launches, you must log in with the default username and password, which is admin for the username and Q for the password. Once you log in, the Card Access 3000 event grid will display. On the screen, the bottom half is the pending alerts grid, which displays all the transactions that are considered high priority alerts. All transactions are assigned with priorities rated 1 through 98. The lower the number, the higher the priority. The top half of the screen is the event grid. The event grid displays all transactions that have been acknowledged by operator and auto acknowledged. It also displays all the events from your access control panels. Remember, there's six simple steps to program in the Card Access 3000 system. The first step is to configure COM ports. On the main menu, click Configuration COM Ports. The COM port screen will open up. Warning, on this screen, do not click New unless you purchase the license for an additional COM server. In almost all cases, you must click Edit, make your changes, and then click Save. Down below, we'll step through the different columns. First column is COM port number. Second is type. Next is board rate. Next is the IP address. This, is, this column is only used if it's a network connection. The fifth column, which is IP port, was recently added to the newer versions of Card Access 3000. In most cases, you will not change this. Next column is compressed mode. It's not normally used. Next column is the UTC time zone selection. And in most cases, the panel is in the same time zone as the Card Access 3000 host. Reminder, there will always be a record in the screen. To modify this record, click on Edit, make your changes, and then click Save. Under COM ports, there are four different methods of communication. They are cable, network, modem, and wireless. You would select cable if you have a physical polling cable and wireless is the setting while you are communicating to a wireless lock through a gateway. One important note, if you are configuring a COM port for a Lantronics or a network interface board, it is highly recommended to select COM port 5 or higher. First, to configure a panel, click Configuration Panel, click New, 
enter the name for the panel, click the drop down box, select your panel type, set the panel address, the station name will default to host COM ports. Set the COM port for the correct COM port the panel is connected to and also verify enabled is selected. By default, enabled is selected. Leave all the other settings at the default and then click save. After a COM port and a panel are configured, the panel should start communicating to the host. You must verify the polling cable is connected prior to it communicating. If it is a newer panel with downloadable firmware, the download should automatically start. Refer to the event grid and the communication driver screen to determine if you have established communications. To configure the panel, click on the main menu configuration panels. Next, up to this point we have configured a COM port, a panel, and now we're going to configure a schedule. Click Administration Schedules from the main menu, click New, and then enter the name of the time schedule. Typical schedule would be 24X7. It is recommended as your first schedule to always create a 24-7 schedule. First you need to click the start day. The start day will populate with Monday and the rest of the fields will populate as a Monday through holiday 12 a.m. to 12 a.m. schedule. This schedule is active all the time and it's an excellent schedule to use while you are bringing up the system minutes. After the schedule is created, click save. Note, there are several places within the software that allow you to assign a time schedule. This screen is the focal point for all these time schedules. It is very important to assign the appropriate name for your time schedule. To configure a schedule, click Administration Schedules. The screen here displays the 24-7 schedule. And as previously noted, the name is 24X7. The start day, which was selected, is Monday. And the rest of the fields did populate by default. So it's Monday through holiday, start time is 12 a.m., end time is 12 a.m. Next you want to configure a reader. Click Configuration Readers from the main menu. The reader screen will display. Click New and select the panel and select the reader number. Click the door control tab. Next you got a door sensor input, which is the door contact, and a bypass input, which is a normally a request to exit button or a PIR motion detector. And finally your strike relay number. To configure a reader, click configuration readers. On this screen, click New. The bottom half of the screen is where you'll be making your selections and entering a name and assigning a group. After you configure a reader, the next thing you will configure is an access group. Click Access from the main menu and then Access Groups. The access group screen will display. Click on New to create a new access group and enter the description of the access group. Down below, double click on the panels, excuse me, readers header. This will expand your list of panels and readers. 
For each reader, click the drop down menu on the right side where it is labeled time schedule. Select a specific time schedule. For our example, we will select 24 7. Verify all the settings are correct and then click save. To get to create an access group, click access on the main menu and access groups. The access group screen will display. Click new. Enter 24x7. Down below, click on the panel slash readers column, and the panel and reader should display. On the right side, there's a down arrow on the time schedules. All the time schedules you previously created will display in this drop down list. But for this example, we will select the 24 7 time schedule which we created. And Finally, the last step is to configure a badge. To configure a badge, you click on the personnel icon. The personnel screen will display. Click on new to create a new card or badge. If you want to edit an existing card or badge, you must find it first and select the edit button. There are several fields that can be changed and modified for each badge. We are going to focus on the main fields. The activation and expiration date are optional. And also, most important, you must select an access group. Again, a reminder, there are certain defaults that exist for all badges. We recommend these fields be left untouched. On the screen to configure a new badge, click New. If you have badges already created, you must click the Show All Badges button. Again, you must enter a badge number, which is the number of your Fox card or Magstripe card. You must enter a first name and a last name. The facility, for this demonstration, we will not be using facility codes. So you just leave it at the default value of zero. Summary. Programming the card access 3000 is very simple and can be accomplished in six simple steps. Try to remember CPS RAP. Comport, panel, schedule, readers, access group, and personnel. In many cases, you will be using the default settings, so very little programming is required. To review the steps in this presentation, refer to the Card Access 3000 Quick Start Programming Guide as a reference.